Okay, so let's start talking about 14 steps on how to become successful in life. And the first step is become a person who owns his own life. So become a person who owns his own life. How do you understand this phrase? Please share your comments your thoughts and comments section. What it means for you to become a person who owns his own life? A person who owns his own life is a person who has his own opinion, his own desires, his own goals. A person who is responsible for meeting his own needs and solving his own problems. So if you would like to be successful in life, if you want to have success, it can be financial success, it can be a uh, happy, healthy relationship in your life, uh, it may be status, social status. So if you would like to be successful, then stop trying to fulfill others, other people's expectations, other people's desires and put yourself as a priority. Uh, do not be selfish, but rather be responsible for meeting your own needs first and then others. So step number two is do not enable yourself. Do not enable yourself. So before giving up or asking for help, ask yourself, think about what you can do to help yourself in the respective situation. If you need help, do not wait for it, just ask for it. And do not avoid conflicts. Instead, be open to discuss any problems that you have and look for the solution. So step number two, do not enable yourself. Find the solution and be open to discuss any problems. Step number three, do not take other people's responsibilities. And step number four, stop helping others when they are not asking for it. Let's talk a little bit about those steps. So step number three is do not take other people's responsibilities. You should learn and start saying things like, I'm sorry, but it is not my responsibility. Unfortunately, I cannot help you in this situation. Unfortunately, I am not the right person to help you in this situation. With all due respect, I have a different opinion on this situation. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. I cannot help you with this. So do not take other people's responsibility and be polite. Be able to say no with respect towards other people. Number four is stop helping others when they are not asking for it. The most important element in this step is when they are not asking for it. So when you want to help others, this is a hidden desire to control other person or to control the situation. This is also a hidden desire to avoid your own life, to avoid your own responsibility in life. And this is also a sign of a good boy, good girl syndrome. A desire to make other person happy, a desire to help other person, a desire to fulfill other people's expectations, a desire to be a nice person, desire to prove others that I am good, I am worthy. This is actually a childhood desire to earn mother's or father's love, to earn mother's or father's attention. And when we um, were children, uh, for us, it was our defensive mechanism. But right now we're not children, we are adults. And desire to be good, desire to help others, often are not going to bring us to success. Often we're going to focus too much on other people's life and we will forget about our own life. So if you want to help others, this is great, but do not force it, just offer your help. And if people say no, it means no. For example, you can say something like this, sounds like you are having troubles. If you need my help, please let me know. 
If you need my help, I am here. If you need my help, just call me, but do not force it. This is the secret of success. Let's move to the next step. Step number five is always finish your thoughts. And this is also a very, very important uh, step. Always finish your thoughts. So when it comes to emotions, remember to finish your thoughts. For example, uh, if you're angry, don't just say, I am angry. Say, I'm angry because I'm angry because I'm tired. I'm angry because I'm late. I'm angry because I did not sleep enough yesterday. Uh, or for example, I don't feel well because I had too much alcohol yesterday. Or I don't feel well because I have a headache. Mm, I feel great because uh, my kid won a Kids uh, of the Month award or I feel great because I had a great weekend. So always finish your thoughts. This will help you to connect with your own feelings. This will help you to understand yourself better. And this will help you to understand other people better. Because once you will connect your emotions and your thoughts, uh, the life you're gonna look at life on from a different angle you will be able to understand yourself your own emotions your own actions better and other people and then you can create healthy relationship healthy boundaries in your life then you can have meaningful relationship in your life because you will know why people person did something how uh, he came to this decision once you're gonna connect with your own emotions and connect your thoughts your brain with your heart basically then it's gonna be easier for you and of course of course you don't have to explain yourself all the time that's why i said always finish your thoughts not your sentences so thoughts uh, you are an adult it's your decision if you want to share your thoughts with other people or not these are your own thoughts and your own, and your you only you can decide if you should speak them out loud or not let's uh, let's move on to the next step so step number six is to be patient if you fail do not give up on yourself Allow yourself time to learn new things. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Be patient with yourself. And again, if you need help, do not afraid, do not feel um, bad, do not feel that something is wrong with you. Instead, find a mentor, find the therapist who will help you to work on your problems. Step number seven, learn from your own mistakes. And number eight, encourage yourself to try new things. Those two steps are connected. So we're going to talk about step number seven first. Learn from your own mistakes. And a lot of times uh, people feel guilty, shame, and they, instead of learning from their own mistakes, they're giving up. So in, I'm offering you to ask yourself, what can I learn from this? What can I do differently next time? What specific result do I want to achieve? So instead of feeling bad, instead of feeling shame, instead of going into those negative emotions, turn on your logic. This is uh, very good when we have and should use our logic. So instead of going and um, you know feeling all those negative things, start thinking, what can I learn from this experience? And then it will be easier for you not to give up on yourself. Because once you will analyze your mistakes, once you will think, what can I do differently? Then you can learn from this mistake and then you can move forward. And the next step is encourage yourself to try new things. And this is very important because 
if you're gonna stuck in your negative emotions, if you're gonna stuck in your bad feelings, then you cannot move forward. So when you ask yourself, what can I do differently next time to avoid this mistake? You can start learning new things. So when was the last time when you tried something new in life? When was your last time when you actually did something new in your life? Maybe learned the new skills. If you never try, then you can never know the outcome. So allow yourself to make mistakes, allow yourself to do silly things, allow yourself to learn new, to learn new skills and allow yourself to enjoy the diversity of this world. Once you're gonna allow yourself to try new things, once you're gonna allow yourself to make mistakes, you will criticize, your, criticize yourself less. And you will allow other people also to do mistakes, also to do silly things, and you can enjoy this life together. You will be able to see new opportunities in life. You will be able to meet new people. Uh, the more new skills you, you learn, um, the more skillful you're going to be. So you can apply those skills in different areas in your life. And of course, one of the areas is finances. So if you learn something new and you go to your boss and you talk to your boss and say, hey, you know, uh, I decided that this skill will benefit me at work and I would like to learn this or I've learned it already, you know, the boss will promote you faster. Next step. Step number nine, reward yourself for little victories and celebrate your big achievements. And before you're going to reward yourself for little victories, uh, you have to recognize your own achievement. You have to recognize your own victories. So do not diminish yourself, but instead learn how to see and recognize your own achievements. And the great technique is to create uh, a list of your achievements. You can take a notebook and write down every little victory that you made. And then your self-esteem will go up. Your confidence level will go up. And in order to be successful in life, you need to have a healthy self-esteem and you have to be confident in yourself. So when you're going to notice and recognize your own achievements, other people will notice and recognize your achievements. And if you achieved big goals, then celebrate. Uh, learn how to share your success with others. Uh, share your success with your family, share your success with your friends, let them know about them so they can support you as well. And the more support you have, the more successful you're going to be. Uh, make sure that your boss at work knows about your achievements. Because a lot of times we can achieve something, but we do not tell our boss that we did it. And maybe we have a team of 20 people at work and the boss does not know who, who played the biggest role in this achievement. So make sure to, to let your boss know about your achievements. And uh, another important element in this step is to recognize other people's successes. Congratulate them and then ask for their advice when you need it, of course. So if somebody already achieved something that you want and you recognize this person's success, then can, you can congratulate him and ask for an advice. Step number 10, remind yourself that there is no black and white. So remind yourself, remember, there is no black and white in life, but there is a rainbow of colors. There are no perfect people. There are no perfect job. There are no perfect partner and no perfect families. So accept that other people can make mistakes, can be wrong. Other people can be mad, can be sad, can be angry, can act stupid time to times, and can be rude sometimes. And other people and you can also be wrong, can also be mad, you can be sad, you can be angry. 
and you can act stupid sometimes. So accept your own imperfections. Once you accept your own imperfections, you will be able to accept other people's imperfections. And then you will be able to switch from self-criticism to self-acceptance. People often ask me how to love yourself. So in order to love yourself, you should stop criticizing yourself. You have to switch from self-criticism to self-acceptance. And in order to do this, you have to remind yourself that there is no black and white. And there are no perfect people and everybody can be mad, sad, angry or act stupid sometimes. Step number 11. Create healthy boundaries and do not get in the middle. And I will repeat this. Create healthy boundaries and do not get in the middle. Do not get in the middle between your child and your wife, between your child and your husband, between your child and uh, your grandparents, his grandparents, your parents, between two of your friends. Don't get in the middle between your boss and co-worker, between your neighbors, etc. And uh, I have a webinar which is called Healthy Boundaries. Uh, the link is below this video. On that webinar, I share 10 reasons why people cannot say no. Why, um, it's, why this is so hard to create healthy boundaries. And if you are interested in this topic, please check this webinar after we finish this one. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the hero syndrome, the desire to help others, the desire to be the good one, the desire to be the best one, uh, the desire to be a nice person. And my advice to you is do not try to be a hero in every situation. Do not try to save people. Do not try to help people when they are not asking for it. Remember, the hero always gets the blame for failure. So are you willing to take responsibility for other people's life? If you say something, for example, to your friend and she will break up with her boyfriend, are you willing to take responsibility for her relationship with her boyfriend. If you say something uh, and your sister will decide to quit her job, are you willing to be blamed for, to uh, take res be responsible for financial decisions in her life? Remember, the hero always gets the blame for failure. So the hero syndrome is not as nice as it looks. Uh, so I offer you learn how to separate your responsibilities from other people's responsibilities. Do not mix those things together. Do not get in the middle and learn how to separate those things. Learn how to create healthy boundaries. Learn how to say no. And as I said, I have a separate webinar for this and you can check the link below this video. Okay, the next step is be consistent and clear. Be consistent and clear. People will trust you more and will respect you more if you will be consistent and clear. So do not change your opinion often. That's okay, that's normal if you have different opinion, like today you think this way, tomorrow you change your opinion. That's also fine and the main point in this step is do not do it often. So be clear with your expectations and consequences, especially when it comes to other people who depend on you with your kids, with your co-workers. So be consistent and clear. Then people will listen to you. Then people will trust you. Then people will follow you. Uh, this is a great leader's uh, skill. So people will follow you. Uh, the next step. Two more steps. Step number 13, retain the hierarchy. Healthy hierarchy. And um, this is also one of the most important steps to be respectful to people who are higher than you and do not let people who are below you to control you. 
For example, if you have kids, do not let them boss you around. And if you have a boss at work, do not devalue him. Respect your boss. He is higher than you in hierarchy. If you have uh, subordinates at work, do not let them overrule you or do not let them to talk to your boss behind your back. So retain the healthy hierarchy. So know your place and defend your place. This is also about healthy boundaries. To know your place and to defend your place. Do not let uh, people who are below you to control you and respect people who is higher than you. And for that, I have another webinar. It's free webinar. It's already on YouTube and the name it's called is uh, uh, the law of family hierarchy and consequences that people face if they break it. Extremely important point, extremely important step. If you are interested in this topic, if you want to discover it more, check my other webinar. But remember, retain the healthy hierarchy. And step number 14 is believe in yourself. Believe in yourself at the top of the pyramid. If you do not believe in yourself, nobody will. If you uh, need to work on your self-confidence, if you need to work on your self-esteem, do it. Uh, you have to learn how to overcome your fears. We all have fears and that's normal. That's okay. So believe in yourself, find the mentor, find the psychologist, find the therapist and work on your self-confidence. Learn how to connect with your inner self. If you do not believe in yourself, how other people can believe in you? How other people can treat you with respect if you do not respect yourself? So you have to learn how to treat yourself with love and respect and how to believe in yourself. So these were 14 steps on how to become successful in life. So success is not easy, but it's not as hard as you think. It's possible. And if you want to be the boss of your own life, if you want to create the life that you really, really want, then I advise you to take the next step. And I would like to invite you to my four weeks online workshop, which is called My Life, My Rules. And uh, the workshop will start in three weeks. And uh, let me just show you some information on my website. So this is my web, uh, website. Uh, you can find the link below the video. This is the link. And when you click on that link, uh, you will, um, it will take you to my website. And on the home page, uh, there is a simple form where you can enter your email name, oops, uh, city and, and the country and click sign up. Then you have to confirm your email and that's it. You will receive invitation to all my webinars. If you scroll a little bit down, then you will see the schedule. So November 23rd, next Saturday, we're going to have free webinar. Everybody is welcome, which is called 10 signs of emotional immaturity. Then the next week, November 30th, also Saturday, we're going to have a webinar, which is called a manipulator's secrets and how not to fall into them. And then four weeks, it's going to be online workshops starting December 7th, 14th and 21st and 29th. My life, my rules. You can click here or you can click on the top right banner and then it's going to take you to the page. It's loading a little bit slow because I'm live. So on this page, you can find specials, you can find discounts and you can find information about why should you attend this workshop, what to expect, what results you can receive on this workshop. So uh, if you find this video helpful, please click like, subscribe and share. Share this video on your social media, share this video uh, on your Facebook, on your LinkedIn. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in chat 
and uh, I will be happy to see you on my next free webinar next Saturday, which is going to be 10 signs of emotional immaturity and then another free webinars uh, which is called manipulator secrets and how not to fall into them again if you find this video helpful please click like subscribe and share thank you very much for watching my name is elena semenek and this is psychology of happiness where happiness is the purpose of life see you next time bye bye